Hey guys, we're back for part two. So we're still talking about positives of ADHD. It's the amazing superpowers. And again, it's on additudemag.com, which is A-D-D-I-T-U-D-E-M-A-G.com. Since I didn't spell it out earlier, I thought that would be nice if I did in case you wanted to check it out. But we are on number eight and it is multitasking. And there's this cute picture now I'm looking at this mom. She's ironing and she's holding her toddler on their website and it's bringing back all those memories but um yeah my son's 13 now so not too much holding him on my hip anymore but it basically says many with ADHD are thriving we're more productive when we're doing more than one thing at once and I think that has a lot to do I think you guys would agree with me just the attention span we're thinking so fast we want to do things fast and if you're interested in multiple things it's like you want to do them all and all right now just that kind of like urgency feeling just depending on how into what you're doing it's fun to multitask sometimes it's fun to get the action going I know for me that was me today it was like I felt like I could not survive today unless I was just like constant just motion all day long and I have been up oh my gosh I woke up you don't even want to know how early I woke up guys it was 3 30 this morning today and I could not go back to sleep and I have been going to sleep super early getting plenty of sleep believe it or not but it was just one of those days so I don't know if anyone can relate not every day is like that but I know with work one of the attitude readers they wrote in my job is overwhelmingly chaotic but I always manage to find ways to get the multitude of things done all at once and then another one wrote in to do anything I have to multitask so I'm totally feeling that in fact, as I'm typing this, I'm drinking coffee, talking on the phone. When my brain doesn't have enough stimulation, I'm comatose. Exactly. Thank you. And I don't know who that is. They're writing attitude readers. And another one, Deb, W wrote in, we can have a lot of things to do at once. I can do them better and faster than anyone. And if a storm is coming and we have to bug out, I'm the queen of packing and getting everything ready and everyone ready and gone. That's hilarious. But no, I'm the same way. I think everybody's different I don't know what you guys do or if you you know incorporate different tools with your kids but like music is huge for me I know I was just talking about that earlier just when I was walking today and I was brainstorming ideas this morning I came up with a, just so many ideas while I was drinking coffee while I was listening to a YouTube video and then I switched to music and then I couldn't stop just going back and forth because it was like helping me like wave out the I guess the energy burst, you have a burst of ideas, whether it's going on in your brain or your body, and you just kind of have to ride that wave, right? It's like surfing. You just got to ride it out. You don't want to jump off because you want to see what happens, right? It's kind of like, where is this going to take me? Nobody knows because you're living your life to your best. And then number nine is laser focus. So I know a lot of people with ADHD, when we're harnessing that hyper focus, we can accomplish a lot more faster. And I would say more intensely with this superpower. This is one of my favorites. I do call it hyper focus. They call it super focus here. One of the readers wrote in and said, when I'm playing a particular game, I've been known to look up near the end and say, hey, it got dark. What day is it? And did I eat today? David? I don't know if I've done that, but I definitely think my son has been there. Even though we try to get him off the video games and take a break, but we definitely let him go ham some days because it's just fun. And then another one wrote in, Buck, see, I can sit down and work on a project and go, go, go. It would take others double the time what I do when my superpower kicks in. And it served me well, especially in emergency situations when acting quickly is critical. And I would agree. I've always said like I'm really good with emergencies or... I feel like back in the day, I was better with deadlines than I am now, but I think it kind of ebbs and flows, right? As we go through different seasons of life, different ages, different like stress levels. And I know I feel like, I don't know about you guys, but I feel like I've taken a lot of stress on over the years. And so now I've had to say no so much more than I ever have at any other point in my life. But it's like when I'm saying no to external things, I'm saying more yes to me. And it doesn't always make sense. Maybe back in the day, it used to make more sense to me why I would say yes and do other things. And now I'm saying more yes to me. And I'm like, why? What am I, where, what is all this stuff I'm doing? Like, why do I want to do this? I don't know, but I, I just keep riding that wave. 
So I don't know how you guys feel, but it's definitely um, served me in that respect as well. And then number 10, we're looking at endless energy. Speaking of, so when you're hyper-focusing, it does kind of coincide with en endless energy. I will say, even with the fun of all the energy that comes out and the energy bursts, it can be really fun. It, it can feel high, but then it can take you low too. Because I know I felt that today. I was like, this energy is really annoying. Like, I was annoying myself, but we're the only pe person you can't run away from, right? You can't get away from yourself. So if that energy is getting too much or annoying it's like you have to kind of figure out what to do with it do i need to take a bath do i need to calm down a little bit so that's kind of where i'm at today as well but this point is endless energy it says you won't find an adult or a child with adhd running out of batteries we're like the energizer bunny going and i have definitely been called the energizer bunny more than once that's for sure i'll just share a quick fun story i'm sure you guys have plenty of them as well but it was my friend's wedding the other year and i always love dancing it doesn't matter where i am at the house at a party or wedding but this was at a particular time too when like my i had some health challenges as i've had over the past few years some people know about that but and it's had a lot of different symptoms and so sometimes i'd be like completely wiped out so when i would have the energy and like the music's going and i would just write it so intensely and harder than usual because i know what it feels like to not be able to move these more intense like medical health stuff i was going through so i was at my friend's wedding and i will say it's a part indian wedding so pretty serious dancing going on if you guys know anything about indian weddings and celebrations it's like a big deal and i was just having so much fun probably too much fun but i pretty sure i danced three to four hours straight without like stopping because at the end, I was the last person on the dance floor and it was ending in one of those where you're, it's like you're doing like air guitar. It was like a serious like rock and I got down on my knees and I just went hard at it. And I was like on my knees on the floor doing air guitar and I was wet. I was sweat. My hair was wet. It looked like I had been swimming. But by the time I was trying to, trying to leave, I couldn't walk. I literally, my legs and my buckling and I had to like get in a chair and just sit there because I literally couldn't walk I could have used a wheelchair <laughs> so that's one of those times when the energizer bunny might have gone a little too far but it was a super fun night and I finally got my energy back together and I was able to walk to the car eventually but it, it did take me a little bit so I don't I'd love to hear if anyone else has examples like that too but the, one of the readers wrote in cat, my son loves climbing. It gives him a neat vantage point. And we spend a lot of time hiking outdoors. He is learning how to safely climb in a bouldering gym when the rest of us are tired out. And then another mom wrote in April B. My son's just starting a running club at his school and he uses all that energy inside of him on the track. He gets a token for every mile he runs and he's determined to fill a whole chain of them. I love that. Because especially with the kids and the ADHD, this incentives and just, you know, just feeling that motivation. Of course, it's going to make you want to even go harder and just do your best. And then that brings us to number 11, zeal for life. They all kind of go hand in hand, right? They just like seamlessly flow. So people with ADHD have faced difficulty. We overcome it. We know how to look on the bright side, enjoy life, even when it's not all rain goes in sunshine. So Carol wrote in, my daughter's zest for life is contagious. She just radiates energy, enthusiasm, optimism. Yes, her bedroom looks like a tornado ripped through it, but each morning she emerges from the chaos with a smile on her face, ready to greet the day, and I find myself smiling too. And then another reader wrote, and my daughter's been through so much in her life, but she always comes out with a happiness and her beautiful grin. I love it so much. And I feel like the same way with my son. No matter what happens, we're going to come out and just have that zeal for life and love it. And then number 12 is acceptance. So... The point here is those with ADHD experience the world in a more, not in a more unique way, but in a definitely unique way, which, which can make us a little bit better at accepting others, like differences. And then sometimes in ourself, it comes a little later in life. I know it has for me. One of the readers wrote in, Leslie, my daughter accepts herself despite her difficulties with ADHD. And she is patient with everyone. We struggle to be patient with her. She's eager and determined. And then I love what Lisa wrote too. My son has empathy born of his ongoing struggle. He can find the good in any person 
recognizing that each person comes with their own strengths and challenges. That's just human, mom, he says. The trick is accepting everyone and yourself. And we need each other's differences because it makes us a stronger team overall. And I would say, yeah. I definitely, I look at my son. He's so empathetic and he's such a great example of that. Just loving other people, being kind. I know he got one of those um, like kindness awards. You know, do the certificates in class. I think I mentioned his class comedian one, but he's definitely gotten like class most kind, most generous kid. And I'm like, it just makes me burst with happiness to hear that. And I know um, I felt the same way too. It's not like, oh, I'm so great, but it's like yourself and you know your heart. And I know growing up being taught faith and everything like that, it was like, I always kind of had that in the back. No matter what it really is, God knows my heart, right? This higher power, this God that a lot of people talk about having faith, spiritual life. I always knew. I'm not worried about it because I know who I am and God knows my heart. So I'm not worried about it. And I know I'm a kind, generous person. So I think that I really love that point. But then this brings us to the end. Number 13 is a strong moral compass. So they do have a little sign about right and wrong, which I know in today's society and different backgrounds, groups of people, we get in arguments. I know about what's right and what's wrong and We don't talk politics and religion and all that on here, but, um, you know, it's all part of society, right? And how we were brought up. So individuals with ADHD often have hearts of gold and rely on a set of morals to show the way. But I do think it's like subconscious. I think it's just built in. It's automatic when you're really being yourself. And that's what I've learned when I'm being myself. My morals are just built in there. And sometimes when I deviate, or whatever, I don't beat myself up anymore because now I understand, and I've learned this through therapy, because that sometimes it's like a survival skill. If it seems like someone's like, oh my God, I can't believe you did that, or like, that was wrong. And I'm like, you know what? I've learned that's a survival skill. In the moment, that was the right thing for me to do to survive and get on to the next thing, because maybe I've been traumatized this way or that way, or maybe this happened to me. So I can't, it's tough when you feel like, I know, I'm speaking for myself, but when you feel like you've done the right thing so much and it doesn't pay off and you're like, well, what's the right thing for me? And I think, you know, your heart's going to lead the way. Um, You know, I think we all know when we're really doing the right thing from within us and there's really no questioning that. And then one of the readers, I want to read this one from Rebecca. My daughter has a strict sense of what's right has no problem telling someone when they're in the wrong. And right now, as her mom, it drives me insane at times, but I know it's a true superpower. And I have to say my son is the same way. So I'm like, I feel like I've done something right because he has zero problem even looking at me and being like, Mom, why did you do that? What's up with that? He's not afraid. He knows he's emotionally safe with me to share and... If he keep us all balanced on the right track and then I can check him too. I can be like, hey, I really appreciate that. I respect that. But, you know, you said that and like I heard you. You don't have to like, if you can, you know, not beat me over the head with that, that'd be great. And he's like, oh, sorry. I didn't mean to do that. So it's kind of like checks and balances, right? We got to help each other. I always say chickity check yourself before you wreck yourself. That's when I insert my my fun line in there. But Thank you guys so much for hanging in here with me. I'm going to recap all of these points one more time because these positives of ADHD, these amazing superpowers, are worth mentioning one more time. So we did the second half. We talked about number eight, multitasking. Number nine, laser focus. Ten was endless energy. Eleven, zeal for life. Twelve, acceptance. And then thirteen is that strong moral compass. And I hope you guys do check out the Attitude Mag dot com they have some amazing resources on there and again they're celebrating 25 years just helping guide the way and educate everybody about adhd and add and how you know the research and information has changed over the years and it's updated so i hope that you will join me next time when we talk about all things adhd again and you can always email me at crystal and the cold black 2023 at gmail.com. Thank you. See you later.